Good morning and welcome to this act of worship. Let us pray. Just as we are, Lord, we gather in your presence. Help us to be the body of Christ in this place and just where you put us. To stand together with our neighbours, to bring the good news to the poor, to help set the oppressed free. In your strength and in your name and to your glory we pray. Amen. And so let us pray. Almighty and most wonderful God, unsearchable and inexhaustible, greater than we can ever imagine, higher than our highest thoughts, enthroned in glory and splendour, we come to give you our worship, to offer our praise, to make our confession recognising that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our misplaced pride and arrogance. We have been full of our own importance, preferring our ways to yours, imagining we know all there is to know about you trusting in our own wisdom instead of your guidance, setting ourselves up in your place. But your ways are not our ways, and your thoughts are not our thoughts. Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our narrow vision and closed minds. We have tied you down to our own understanding closing our hearts to anything which challenges our restricted horizons, losing sight of your greatness, 
failing to listen to your voice or the voice of others, refusing to accept that others beside ourselves have insights to share. But your ways are not our ways, and your thoughts are not our thoughts. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty and most wonderful God, remind us that you have always more to say, more to reveal and more to do. Open our minds, open our eyes and open our hearts to who and what you are. Remind us that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. Lord, have mercy upon us. And so fill us with awe and wonder, joy and thanksgiving, praise and worship, now and forevermore. Amen. Luke chapter 4, reading verses 14 to 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, as we just heard, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And Jesus speaks these words right at the beginning of his public ministry. You could say at this point, he lays out his table, saying more or less, this is who I am. This is what I am about. Some people have called these words Jesus's manifesto. Unfortunately, perhaps, the word manifesto has come to have fairly negative meanings in our present times, hasn't it? What is the first thing that comes into your mind when you hear the word manifesto, I wonder? The English Oxford Dictionary defines it as meaning a public declaration of policy and aims, particularly of a political party before an election. Over the last few years, successive political parties have been accused of abandoning their manifesto promises once they were in power. And some have even been accused of putting things into their manifesto just to get votes when they had no real intention of carrying them out at all. Now, of course, we could debate whether either of these is true or not. The point is, though, that when Jesus says, this is who I am, this is what I am about, this is my manifesto, he means it. When he, what he says are not empty political promises, trying to get popularity. The passage we are talking about is Jesus's manifesto and he will carry it out. There is no shadow of turning with him, as one of our traditional hymns puts it. And anyway, Jesus knew that his manifesto wasn't going to get him lots of votes and popularity with the authorities in the long run. The world's judgment on his manifesto was going to be his death. It would, of course, though, 
be popular with the have-nots, the powerless, those being set free by it, but not with the haves, those whose power was challenged by it. You know, I admit that there are some passages in the Bible that are very difficult to understand, but not all of them, and certainly not this one. Listen again. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has proclaimed, anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. What do these words mean to you? In our day, who are the prisoners? Who are the blind? Who are the oppressed? It really isn't rocket science, is it? What Jesus is saying his mission is, and therefore what his followers mission is, our mission, it's not difficult to understand, is it? It may be difficult to live out. It may be difficult when faced with the vast range of need in the world to discern which one or ones we're called to work on. But the basic principle is straightforward, isn't it? And that same call for social justice runs right through the Bible from the Old Testament to the New. In Isaiah, God says, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? And Micah says, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Social justice has been a major focus of Methodism right from the beginning. Even while he was still a student, John Wesley visited those who were literally in prison in his time. But of course, social justice isn't only a Methodist focus or only a Christian focus. It's the concern of many, many people of all faiths and of none. But it is ours. Jesus' words is our manifesto. You see, the Bible is sometimes difficult to understand, perhaps sometimes very clear and often very, very challenging. And we each of us should be challenged by the Bible and by this particular passage every time we read it, because this is what Jesus wanted people to know about him right at the beginning. It is that important. So I wonder what God is saying to you and to me and to our churches through this passage this morning. Perhaps God is saying, well done, good and faithful servant, because God has called you to pray for a particular issue and you are doing so, or to support a particular activity, charity or individual, and you are doing that. But I am sure that God is saying to all of us to come afresh, to come and listen. God is saying, this is my manifesto. Is it yours too? Amen. And now we'll sing together, When I Needed a Neighbour. This hymn was written by Sidney Carter. And the version that we're going to join in with is Sidney himself uh, singing this hymn. When I need a 
let us pray. We praise you for the freedom we take for granted, Lord, the freedom to serve you every day of our lives, openly and seldom challenged. We often give so little thought to this freedom, and we sometimes even fail to exercise it. So we thank you, Lord, for every opportunity that comes our way to be your hands, your eyes, your heart in this world to do your will, to see things as you do, to share your love. We praise you that in serving, we stand alongside our sisters and brothers in Christ in a ministry stretching down the generations from Jesus himself. All thanks and praise be to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, as food prices rise and fuel costs increase, we pray for wisdom in how we use our resources, guide us and help us. We pray for those who struggle to pay their bills and those in debt and those who worry about the months to come. We ask your blessing on food banks, debt counselling services and credit unions and help us all to be generous in supporting one another and sharing what we have. May your kingdom come through our prayers, actions and words. Loving God, we pray for our justice system, 
for the police, lawyers, judges, probation officers, and those who work in our prisons. May justice be served in the courts. May all be treated with fairness and equity and have equal opportunity to representation. Be with those who have been convicted and those serving prison sentences and support their families and all whom they love. May your presence bring comfort and hope. May your kingdom come through our prayers, actions and words. Loving God, sometimes the way forward is unclear. We hope for easing of restrictions, but we wonder about the timing or risks. Give insight to scientists and politicians that we may be led in the right direction and be encouraged by the hope which your spirit offers us. May your kingdom come through our prayers, actions and words. Loving God, in these challenging times, give wisdom and strength to those who are trapped in lives of addiction, who feel there is no escape. We pray for the work of Alcoholics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, Drug Addicts Anonymous, and all groups who seek to show people a path through addiction and offer kindness and support. May your kingdom come through our prayers and actions and words. Loving God, we thank you for the mission and ministry of Jesus, for the challenge he offers, the peace with which he fills us, and his love which inspires us. We pray that we may find imaginative ways to share his love and to proclaim his good news. Bless the church throughout the world. Enable the stronger to support the more vulnerable, that Jesus' name may, may be known and honoured in every place. May your kingdom come through our prayers, actions and words. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Amen. And we pray for the kingdom in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
let us pray. God, you call us to be the body of Christ in this place, side by side, hand in hand, help us to stand together, to stand with our neighbours, to break free from all that holds us back, from making the world as you want it to be. In Jesus' name, Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>